on Saturday night football, Port Melbourne versus Carlton. And joining us here at this fantastic old ground, it's Joey Pignataro. Yes, good evening, Brendan, and good evening to everyone tuning in for this one on the AFL website and the AFL Live app. It's set to be a cracking contest as the umpire holds the ball aloft. We are about to get this one underway. Saturday night footy from ETU Stadium. It's Murkov and Hunter going up in the ruck, and it was Hunter down to Templeton in Port Melbourne. Can get the first clearance of the evening. Down towards the paint of 50. Gaspers just lurking around the place. We get the handball going forward from Signorello. A whistle on play. And Anthony Anastasio will be the recipient of the first free kick of the night. Just outside 50. He will look to set this one up. Just sizing up his options. A lot of players inside the arc to start this game. There'll be some nervous energy early. Ball hits the deck. And the Blues can go away in the back pocket. And it will be taken clear eventually getting around traffic there was Lou. Put the kick up to centre wing. Thumped away by uh, the port player in Jack Johnston. Away from the captain tonight in Jesse Glass McCasker. Getting the getting the roll for the Blues. Took the toss, won the toss and kicked to the Bob Bonnet end. Interesting. You talk about the captains. Uh, port Melbourne captain Tom O'Sullivan starting on the bench tonight, Brendan. Yeah, I think he's been doing that the last few weeks as he works his way towards 150 games coming up before the end of this season as the Blues go towards half forward Phillips has had a wonderful year but he's fumbled on this occasion and running out of room however there is Wiedemann it goes over the line for a throw in right in front of the left of the Norm Goss stand near the gates so yeah big game for Port they've been in good form uh, and I give them a real chance of knocking off Carlton tonight Joey the ball's thrown back in. Be interesting to see. The Blues have won their last two previous to the bye. Both of them playing with the yellow Sharon. So they've become accustomed to playing under lights in recent weeks. The old dark navy Blues as Murkov has got the footy just in front of the interchange gates. Goes with the handball. They end up going back to go forwards here. And it's a Quay. He's at his defensive 50. Ball hits the deck. They can all go to work now at ground level. It's Port Melbourne trying to break away from the contest. But the umpire is going to reward Carlton. And they can string the handballs and surge themselves forward inside 50. Is their first chance to go forward for the evening. Ball hits the deck. They all go to work. Fogarty's one of those. At ground level, the umpire will cross his arms. And have this one brought up just outside 50. Nice tackle by Stefan Radovanovic back on the, on the wing there to create the holding the ball. Very nice player is Stefan Radovanovic as Lentini gets to the base of the pack. He's wrapped up by Ned Carl, and Carl is judged to have fallen into his back, so Lentini will get the free kick. Former Coburg player. He'll go with the switch across to the broadcast side. Not a good kick, though. Xavier Marr chops it off, plays on on the right boot, goes inside 50. Ball brought to ground, front and centre. Carl loves him there. Don't give him two looks. Ned Carl with the opening goal of the game for Carlton. And that's where you want your smalls to be. Brendan at the front of the contest doing exactly what Ned Carls did on that occasion. It's a bit of a dangerous kick coming across to this side of the ground. It's, it's almost got to be centimetre perfect sometimes when you're trying to do that and switch and transition the play. Yeah, the, a lot of you see a lot of players are brave enough to do it and they seem to train for it. But yeah, there's very, very small margin for error, isn't there? On that occasion, they made to pay too, and the good teams will do that. Carlton, of course, have the opportunity to be inside the top four if they're to win tonight, and they get the first goal of the evening through Ned Carl, who moves himself up to 17 for the season. We go back into the centre square. Hunter and Murkov will go at it again. This one's gone a little bit astray, so the umpire will call the footy back. Saturday night footy, round 16 of the Smithies VFL season. Big day of Smithies VFL action today. Kerno wrapped up by Hooper, but managed to find support. The ball went wobbling forward. Tom Cameron's lurking around the place. So is Anastasio. He's wrapped up by a couple. It came out to Paddy Dow, whose kick was smothered. Burrowing back in after this one is Sincotta. It came out to Anastasio, off to Templeton. A string of handballs ends up with Campbell Walker and now Tom Cameron. Some fancy footwork from Tom on the wing. 
chisels the ball inside 50. It's a wonderful kick, and it works out beautifully for the Borough, and the Ruckman, Paul Hunter, was on the end of it. Yeah, important player to have back into the team tonight is Paul Hunter. Missed out, I think, with illness last week. And, well, Josh Hodgkin came in for his first game of the year after carrying the ruck last season and did so well that he managed to hold his spot. So Paul Hunter will get the first look at goal for Port Melbourne from right on 50. Strikes it very well. It's going right to the line. In fact, it's going all the way. So he went hunting for the goals and he found it, did the big man. And Port Melbourne have the quick response. One straight six apiece. The opening few minutes of this game at ETU Stadium. Mostly close games already in the in the Smithies VFL. Last night, of course, I saw a terrific game of football down at the Cattery. Have you Casey... defrosted yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Casey Demons, 11-9-75, defeated Geelong, 9-10-64, despite failing to kick a goal in the middle two quarters <laughs> there you of go. the game. That's how good they are, the Demons. They still found a way. Collingwood in his low-scoring game today against North Melbourne, 9-12-66 to 7 6 48. Gold Coast Suns trailed all day but pulled it out of the fire with a 28-minute 28 28 minute goal from Jez McLennan against Frankston, 12-8-80 to 10-16-76. The Dolphins would be very disappointed to miss out uh, after leading all day interstate. Uh, and well, we'll get to the others in a sec because the umpires restarted play here. Murkov over the top. Carl tries to get it through. Murkov has to do his own roving. Got it back to Carroll. He kicks in towards half forward. Back with the flight of the ball, Weedham, and couldn't take the mark. Dangerous handball, Fogarty. Fed it over the top. Turning back inside for the Blues was Handley. Moved forward two weeks ago. And he loses possession of the football. Still a chance here. Goats got it back. Hand pass came out to the advantage of Sincotta, but he left it behind. Carroll can't handle it. And Cameron sees him over the line. Southport Sharks held off the Box Hill Hawks today, 10-14-74 to 8-11-59. And the only blowout of the day, Werribee flexing their muscles against Coburg, winning by 62 points, 15-21, 1-11 to 7-7-49. The ball tossed back in. Here it's one straight six apiece from just outside 50. Sincotta goes into goal. It's just going across the face, but they managed to have another attacking foray forward from a clearance. Did the Blues, they go on to 1-1-7. One, one, one straight six. Port Melbourne. So, Wiedemann just sizing up his options. Was going to come broadcast side and decided against it. Goes to the grandstand side and gets to Eli Templeton. Who brings his own Sharon to most games that he's part of these days. Eli worked the ball up to Gaspar. Murkov was just too hot for him, but it came back to him from Sincotta. Although his kick only went as far as Holmes. He wanted to go backwards, then decided it was better going forwards. Now his kick's partially smothered. Hooper onto Gasper. Whistle on play. Advantage is going to be taken. So they're just outside 50, Port Melbourne. They can surge forward inside 50. If it sits there in business, in the pocket, it's Zeust. Met and then beaten by the boundary line. Tell you what, there was a hint of it hitting the boot there of the Carlton trailing player there. Boundary umpire giving them the benefit of the doubt. Officials tonight, Andrew Tolbert in number one, Nick Jankowski's in 27, and Tom Lyon in number 41. One down by Hunter. Carroll gets the clearance. Port with the numbers here. Angus Hanrahan, little chip back in board. That's not good. Turnover time. Fogarty received it from Dozzy. Sends the kick up towards the open spaces, half forward. Tracking it back is Phillips. He's being worried by Glass McCasker. The support was there. That was nice. Johnston had to cut off the beautiful pass, and it was. And the mark is taken by Holmes at half back. I wouldn't be going backwards in this situation. That's exactly what he does to <laughs> Nash Holmes, however. Ethan Phillips in the switch. Puts it to the outer side. That is uh, Burke, who brings it into centre half back. Through the middle of the ground goes Hooper. Gets the 1 2 with O'Sullivan. Sends the kick to half forward. Front spot. Mark dropped for Carlton. That was by, uh, uh, by Lewis. Turnaround ball. And Angus Hanrahan can put it back in again. 
So they've just set up the wall of Port Melbourne. Hanrahan will keep this one low, right on 50. The Lovely kick works game. out beautifully in the end, and Jesse Cucinotta's on the end of it. And he wants to go by hand to Hooper, who's outside 50 now. He's inside 50, right where it meets the boundary. Sets it up to the top of the square. The Blues have got the numbers right on the last line of defence. A wild handball in the end, right on the last line from Sammy Durden. Ended up going over the line. This one's going to be thrown back in. And first game back, Sam Durden. Played a couple of VFL games. Got into the AFL team. Very unlucky. Man, it broke down again straight away. So he's back in, uh, back in tonight for game number 49 at this level. It's the Bermuda Triangle right now. The Carlton defence in the AFL. The VFL side have worked this one out okay. So it's in a half forward. They're sprinting towards the broadcast side. Not a great kick in the end from uh, Sincotta. It was marked by Wiedemann, who went short to Holmes, who's on the broadcast wing trying to make something happen. He decides to go inboard. Wagner came back in last week. Long ball towards half forward. Great Mark Manton. And Archie Manton takes a contested grab, 25 metres out, 45 degree angle, with a chance to put the second goal on the board for the Borough. Now, I've got a, fortunate enough to have a good look at Archie uh, playing the Ammos a bit with Williamstown, but also against Box Hill a few weeks ago, and it was the second half where he was moved to centre half forward, he became their focal point, and you just take a couple of big marks and he becomes this confidence player. Yeah, he, need, he was never able to get the uh, continuity. Yeah. At, uh, at Werribee to be able to... The continuity of games is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. To be able to build that confidence. He's having it here at Port Melbourne and he's kicking a lovely goal. Terrific finish. And Port Melbourne have two in a row here at ETU Stadium. Archie Manton on the board early. Yeah, and that... Well, we're talking about confidence. To be able to run and jump at the footy and take a good mark like that and then go back and kick a goal in the first quarter. I mean, that's going to pay dividends. In fact, throughout the afternoon or the evening, rather. In fact, I did say Werribee. He never actually got a senior game at Werribee, so that tells you that it's really hard to get continuity when you're not in the team. <laughs> he made his VFL debut last year as a fill-in player for the Gold Coast Suns uh, during all that uh, COVID stuff that was going on in yes. the mid-season. I'll tell you what, though, he's getting some continuity here. Oh, Tonight is game 11. A game 11 out he's, of 11. And he's I played, uh, he's kicked 12 goals now on the back of that one going 11, through. So 11 out of 13, so he has missed two games. Okay. But he's... Uh, Getting that continuity, 12 goals, 12, as you said. It's good to see him playing some nice footy as we see a 6-6-6 warning against Port Melbourne. Now, I'm yet to understand why they give the Ruckman the heads up that that's happened. Maybe you can explain that as the night I, unfolds if you know what we're going on about. The Blues will go forward. Fogarty takes the clearance. They're inside 50. A wild handball from Kerno. Ends up going back the way of the bar. Anastasio's got two to beat. One of those in the air, flying high, was uh, Dave Hanley. He'll just dump it back in long. Glass McCasker's lurking around the place. The ball does hit the deck. Carroll's trying to bend down and pick it up. We've got a Port Melbourne player down, just a couple of metres off this pack, which isn't going too far. Knee in the ribs, I reckon, for Jack Johnston. Yeah, I might, he might have copped one from uh, Joshy Cripps, who's the tallest man around this contest. It's going to be Glass McCasker, though, to do the ruck work for Carlton. Came out the back door. It's still just bobbing around the place at the moment. A wild handball ends up with Port Melbourne. A dump kick more in hope than anything else. It may come back. Hamish Sinnott's got the ball. Went by hand, and Carlton will dump it inside 50. Hope for the best, but only the Borough are home to take the relieving mark. And that is Ethan Phillips, who's having a huge year. Would have to be in contention for the VFL Team of the Year. His kick goes across that back. Johnston's recovered. Goes on the one-two. That was nicely done. Brought out a defence by Oscar Manton. And right in front of our broadcast position, Fletcher Roberts. Well, it's gone out of bounds on the full, so Liam Stocker will take the free kick. Nearly got ourselves a disposal. Well, I don't think I'd be able to dispose of it very well at the moment. Stocker goes inside 50 for Carlton. Brought to the ground by Hodgkin. O'Sullivan does the roving. Fed the hand pass out to Kuchinotta. He goes out wide. Called to hold it up there after taking the mark is Zeust. A long way from home is Cody Zeust. He's having a terrific debut season. Brought it back across to Phillips. Nice pass looking for Oscar Manton. Gets him. 
rocking his old man's old hairdo too. He does Oscar Manton. Doesn't mind that look, does he? Oh, I tell you what, he, lo he looks a lot like Glenn too. He just needs the long sleeves back. Archie's <laughs> got those on. Yes. Yes. Good smother from Tom North too on the mark just then too. Yep, one of the late inclusions, Tom North out of the emergencies along with Sinnott and Luke Goats. Vall had the ball early on. The ball thrown back in. Whistle on play. It's going the way of Alex Murkov. But it was always coming. It took a long time for the whistle to be blown, though. Clear free kick. Against Hodgkin. So Murkov dumps the ball inside 50. Coming out to present was Ethan Phillips. Ball hits the deck. Wrapped up straight away is Oliver Sanders. And the umpire will call for the Sharon again. So now it's Carlton's turn to set up the wall and get a couple of repeat entries. They kick the first goal. The Borough have kicked the next two. Asking the question as to whether that was high, but the umpire's on the wrong side of the contest. It was against Templeton, and Joel Trudgeon is the man picking himself up at the bottom of the pack. Hodgkin palmed it down, tapped it back into the contest, just bobbing around the place. The captain, Tom O'Sullivan, for the moment dumps the footy to halfback. Hooper off to Manton. This is Oscar. Dangerous kick, but it's going to work out beautifully. Anastasio, and on the far side of the ground... The Borough have got all the time in the world. St. Connor goes inside 50. Chiseling ball is going to work out. And they take it the length of the ground. And it's going to end up resulting in a shot at goal. Signorello. Matty Signorello. And the 1% chance of it not coming off, going back inboard, pays off in the end. That kick yeah. back in from Manton. They certainly don't mind the switch, do they, Port Melbourne? Not when it comes off like that. You don't want to see them going to their shells after coughing one up very early on in the game. But we're on board now with Matt Signorello from right on 50. Thumping kick of the football. Just going to the near side and a minor score. So that's Port Melbourne's first blemish of the evening. 2-1 to 1-1 one, one as Carlton bring the footy back in. And it goes into the back pocket. And it'll be brought out of there by Carl. Roaming far and wide, up towards the wing. Mark was dropped uh, by Hunter. Ground level ball. It's going to be held up. And umpire Lyon will come in and call for it. And he puts it back up in the air in front of the Norm Goss stand. Fogarty brought down as soon as he gathered the football by Templeton. Nice tackle. It's a good little matchup, those two. Fogarty and Templeton so far. Very good players. Fogarty working his way up towards AFL selection. Templeton's played over 100 games at this level after a handful for St Kilda. Here is a handball back from Ma. Long ball goes towards half forward from Ned Carl, who's getting a lot of it early doors. Handley lays a tackle, but Walker got the ball. Gave the hand pass back to Wiedemann, who goes all the way back to full back and finds Burke. So Burke's on the last line of defence. Oscar Manton on the broadcast side calling for it in the opposite back pocket. Burke wants to keep it on the grandstand side. It's not a great kick. And Carlton have taken the intercept mark. It's Fogarty again, who's found some space from where the 50 meets the boundary. Just sets it up to the top of the square. Dangerous ball for the Port Melbourne defence. It's Wiedemann just handballing more in hope than anything else. So Sullivan's wrapped up in the contest. The ball's going one way, then the other. The shot at goal. It's a fantastic strike from Sanders. Port Melbourne are asking the question. The umpire refusing to answer it. It's a goal for Oliver Sanders and the Carlton Footy Club. Lovely finish, wasn't it, from Ollie Sanders? He was celebrating straight away as soon as it hit the boot. The Port Melbourne blokes were all asking the question and pointing as to whether there were a couple of fingertips on it. We're all square in the opening 18 minutes of this quarter. Well, if we get a game like this all night, we'll be blessed. Under the Saturday night lights, the second night game here at ETU Stadium. VFL game, that is. Of course, we've seen a, a couple of twilight VFLW games, including the preliminary final a fortnight ago. So the light's getting good usage. 
early doors since they got switched on a couple of weeks ago. As the umpire puts a nice bounce down, Hunter over the top. Now there's a holding decision being picked out here and it's going to Hunter. Gives the hand pass off. Running for him is Templeton. Kicks inside 50. Long ball. Big fly from Aquay. Almost brought it down. Trying to work his way through traffic there. Radovanovic can do so. And the umpire will come in and sort it out. Just one number from a team perspective, Brendan. Uh, 19 marks to three in favour of the Borough so far. Opening 20 minutes. Anastasio. Kick goes across the face of goal. Zeust with a chance here. Beaten for it. Durden received the hand pass from Stocker. His kick's going to find a target. Umpires call play on. Must have been touched off the boot. And we'll get a ball up. The reason I bring up that marks, it just shows how much more of control they've got with the footy in hand. Mind you, it's not quite reflected on the scoreboard as yet. No, they need to... Need to get the rewards for effort, don't they? As the ball is booted clear by Fogarty up towards half-back, but only... 50 metres. 50 metres. Okay. Might have just been a, an encroachment or a movement on the mark. It happened very quickly, didn't it? And they're hot on it, the umpires. They set themselves a precedent early on in the day, or in the, in the night in this case. They've got uh, to stick with it now. Yeah, they do. So this is going to bring them right to within, what, 15, 20 metres of goal. It's a long 50. Still going, is he? It's Angus Hanrahan, who's got the footy. That's gone from the wing right to the teeth of goal. And Hanrahan punches the air. And that is the third goal for Port Melbourne. And they all get across to him as he kicks his first goal in VFL footy. Oh, we like that. We like that. Just played the one game so far, which was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's aligned his club with St. Kevin's in the Ammo, says uh, Angus Hanrahan. Pretty, uh, pretty handy club. Very to, handy. To be linked up with. They're a footy factory out there, the Scobbers. Uh, he hasn't played much footy for St. Kevin's. No, well, this is only, as I said, this is only his second game for Port Melbourne. Played seven for Sandringham. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Played seven for Port Melbourne last year. Oh. I was wrong. He was at Sandringham before that, but didn't play. Right. Didn't play a senior game. So seven games last year, and missed the first half of this season with injury. But he's he's back in town now. So we're about to go back into the centre. 3-1 to 2-1. We've gone nearly 20 minutes in the opening term. We've got a cracker on a Saturday night. And a good crowd is starting to build and fill the Norm Goss stand. Just across from where we're calling all the action on the AFL website and the AFL live app. Murkov won it down. Lentini's tracking back the football. Although Carlton going the other way. It was Ma dumping the footy inside 50. Glass McCasker's down there. Ball hits the deck. The Port Melbourne defence is under siege at the moment. They're fighting bravely. It came out to Wiedemann. Cries of ball. Wiedemann just dumped the footy. Clearing the danger zone for the moment. It may come back. Although it's Templeton breaking a couple of tackles and getting it off to Gasper. Dumping the footy forward. Now it's the Carlton defence who have got a bit of work to do. Tracking the ball back is Sam Durden. Wants to go interchange side of the ground and the kick's going to work out okay. And so they'll stop and prop the Blues and just halt momentum for the moment. At 60 seconds of frenetic footy. The big pack of players. Ethan Phillips takes another defensive mark for the Borough. He's on half back. And so often he does that. Went off to Holmes. And up the line they go to Port Melbourne. They can send the footy inside 50. Two oh, to yeah. beat in the air. That's a terrific mark. As the ball hits the deck, they go the handball away off to Gasper. Cutler steps into goal. Equays right on the goal line, playing the role of the goalkeeper, taking the mark. And Dom Equay will bring it out to the broadcast site. Might be chopped off here. Ed Kerno makes the spoil, gives a hand pass off. Great to see him back playing footy, Kerno. He might get it back here eventually. Turning back in board, however, uh, was Han or Sanders, in fact, into the middle of the ground. Advantage quickly taken here on the free kick. Anastasio goes to half forward. Nice fist in there by Durden, but then was he holding on to Hunter? Umpire said no. Clearing ball. Mark was dropped. Should have done better than that, uh, Jack Carroll. Kick goes back oh. inside 50 from Lentini. 
And the front spot is Gaspar. And he takes the mark 46 metres out from goal. And he'll shoot to give Port Melbourne a two-goal lead. He's a bit of a danger man in the forward line is Jakey Gaspar. He can uh, set them alight in just a couple of minutes. He doesn't need a lot of room either to make something happen. Ten goals in seven games this year for Port Melbourne. It's certainly capable of coming out and kicking a bag of three or four. Big kick this one late in the first quarter. He runs across the paint of 50 and drills it. Goal umpire does not have to move. Jake Gasper with the finish and Port lead four goals to two. They've got the momentum at the moment. They've got the ascendancy. And they've answered each Carlton goal with two of their very own. I'll be very pleased with the start to this game. Around the grounds, if you don't wish to know the score, turn your dial down now so you, that you don't hear this. 34 points down at half time, 29 points down at three quarter time. Noah Anderson has kicked a goal after the siren, and Gold Coast have beaten Richmond by two points. Oh boy. How about that for your Saturday evening? Well, if you don't mind, that's uh, that's a big blow for the Richmond Footy Club. We won't say no more. People will probably turn the dial back up. Got no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> the umpire will have to restart that one. That's going to make some big complexions and setups for the top eight. And it just keeps one side mathematically still in it. Whistle on play. Lentini wants to take the advantage. He does just that. They go inside 50 again. The bar and it's Gasper again. Well, we've seen he's got this in him. There's no question about that. He had the shot two or three minutes ago, which was a snap from this spot on the ground. He's just kicked a goal from the opposite spot, mirroring where he is right now. And he has the chance to kick his second in 60 seconds. And what about Lentini? Footy smarts to take the advantage and explode away. And that is textbook play from the centre of the ground. And now Jakey Gasper. Mirror image to the first one, isn't it? From the opposite flank to where he just kicked the goal. Is it the same result? Oh, yes. You bet it is. Listen to the fans of the borough get around. Jakey Gasper and the red and the blue. This has been a hot start for them. 5-1, 31-2-1-13. They couldn't have asked for a better start, Brendan, to this game. No, it's been spot on. And they, and they have been in good form for a a little bit over a month now since they they sort of sparked themselves with that win over Williamstown in the Johnson Callahan Cup match here. And since then, a big win or oh, sorry, they should have beaten Box Hill. They led by fourteen points deep into time yes. on before getting overrun. <laughs> yes. They had that great win over Werribee. Yes. And then last week they got themselves a four goal lead on Casey before that that superpower team ran them down and ran away. And it certainly wasn't as bad a result as the scoreboard indicated. as uh, It's certainly not a bouncing night for the umpires just yet. They did go with Casey for the best part of two and a half quarters. They did. They were, they were I think, three goals up at quarter time and yeah. kicked the first one of the second. So, so they certainly were right with that powerful team as Lentini wins another centre clearance, goes towards half forward. Oh, he hasn't got it again. Oh. Well, he got to it, but he didn't <laughs> hang on, Gasper. He almost made Joey gasp. Yes, really. <laughs> Umpire Jankowski throws it up in the air. Trying to go through there was Dow, who we haven't seen a lot of just yet, but we know he'll get into the game. Lewis fed it back to Stocker. His kick around the corner towards centre wing. The big fist Ooh. came uh, there from Wiedemann, and I think it created a, a falcon on yeah. himself. It and it might, have, might have been the fist. The fist came... Uh, in fact, from Manton, who's gone back, Archie Manton, and it clocked Wiedemann in the, dong, in the noggin. And he got a knee for his troubles, too, <laughs> from his own teammate. Oh, friendly fire. you got to love it, don't you? Hodgkin won the tap. Here goes Lentini again. What a start he's had. Kicks inside 50. Desperate fist in there for the Blues came from Lewis, and he saw it over for a throw-in, or trudging, I should say. Number 59 is having a very nice year for the Blues as well. So this one's thrown back in. The work of Marcus Lentini around the contest in the last five or six minutes. 
He's proving just how valuable he is to the Port Melbourne midfield. Hunter, he came over the back. A wild handball, more in hope than anything else. Sincotta trying to break a couple of tackles at centre-half back. The kick's a good one. Kartner away. Fogarty works for Glass McCasker. Probably a kick and a half out from goal. Now he's got to go back over his mark. They hold him up on the mark. Glass McCasker just sets it up to the top of the square. Big pack of players. And the mark's been taken on the last line of defence. Who else would it be? Josh it's Hodgkin. Hodgkin, in fact. Has a similar build to Ethan Phillips, who does that so often. Glass McCasker, Johnston, Gasper, wrapped up as soon as he gained possession of the Sharon. And Carlton have just got to get a couple of repeat entries as we near quarter time here, Brendan. As uh, this one's tossed back up, Lukey Goats has given away the free kick in the ruck. And it's Hodgkin to take it. Decided not to give it to Templeton. Then decided not to give it to Oscar Manton, so he gave it to Tom Cameron instead. Is the time lucky? Long ball up to centre wing. Oh, good mark. Oh, not paid. Didn't quite drag it to ground, Radovanovic. And it's going to be a ball up. We're seeing uh, something very rare tonight too, apart from night football at ETU Stadium, Joey. Ed Kerno playing his first VFL game in... Nine, more than nine years. I'll tell you when in a minute as he gets a chance to get the footy here right on cue. Gives a hand pass off. He might get it back here. He does, Kerno, and he gets put over the line by Tom O'Sullivan. So nine years. Nine years. Round two, 2013. Wow. For the Northern Bull Ants. So before they even switch to the Northern Blues. Right. In a game against Bendigo Gold. Bendigo Gold. <laughs> That is a long time ago, and I can tell you some of the names that played in that game uh, shortly, just to just to tell you how long ago that that 46th VFL game was. Right. As we see uh, North come down the wing, sends it towards Harford, flying over the top, unable to take the mark. Uh, there was Manton, Archie, front and centre, uh, was a Trudgeon, kicks to Harford, but only as far as the Borough defender Walker who went into the back pocket and that is Phillips who has the last say of this quarter it is quarter time and it is a terrific start for Port Melbourne they lead by 18 points it is Port Melbourne 5-1-31 leading Carlton 2-1-13 is there another upset brewing Brendan Rhodes is I'm with you <laughs> get my tongue tied in a knot there uh, and as we wait for the last couple to, to get off the ground, the next voice you'll hear is that of Joey Pignataro. Cracking start for Port Melbourne to this game. Five goals to two in the opening term. A handy buffer. We're underway in the second term. The umpire decides to throw this one up. Murkov, handball over his head to Dow. Went back to Carroll. Just got boot to ball. The ball's at centre half forward. I just went past. Ma, who was going through like a freight train, came back to Murkov and back to Dow. It's in a half forward. Paddy goes across the ground with a handball. Just outside 50, it's Ed Kerno going inside 50 with a kick. Ball hits the ground. They can go to work. The Crummers. But this one's camped in the back pocket. The umpire's going to call for the Sharon. Hot start to this one in the second term from the Carlton midfield. Yeah, they needed to lift. I reckon Dan O'Keefe would have got stuck in at the quarter time break. Given how close this ladder is, Hacked out of defence from the borough. Up and under ball. It came through. Stocker got off the hand pass. And that's a nice finish from Carl. They gave him an inch and he took a mile in the first quarter. And he's done it again right there. Classic small forward craft from Ned Carl. And the Blues get the first of the third quarter. And a very similar goal to that one that he kicked in the first quarter. Uh, the way he's just picked it up from a stoppage. Right foot snap, goal. He's up to 18 for the season now. I, for one, was very surprised when he lost his spot on the Essendon list at the end of last year. And he found, found a new home just on the other end of Royal Park. Well, you can argue that the way the Bombers started this season in both the AFL and the VFL, they, they probably missed something like that around goal. Well, they were severely missing 
you know, small forwards, and that's why they've drafted Jai Menzi in the mid-season draft, and he and he isn't far away from getting a game. He's flying at the moment for the Bombers. Back in the centre was Murkov, down to Kerno, off to Carroll. The spiral ends up inside 50. The Blues are pressing. Johnston tracking this one towards the boundary with Glass McCasker. It ends up going over the line. So this is a strong start to the second term for the Carlton Footy Club. Carl has kicked the opening goal. And the margin is back to 12 points. Thrown back in. Hunter, in front of the pack. The ball just is bobbing around the place. Fogarty's in there. Carl's also lurking around. He wants a piece of another one. The umpire will again call for the Sharon. Thrown in the air. Hunter's kick was partially smothered. Carroll is just tracking the boundary at the moment. It ends up going over the line through Kuchinotta. The umpire will throw this one in. So 12 points the margin in favour of Port Melbourne. Carlton, a bit undermanned again tonight. Eight AFL listed players. Although to be fair, that's eight more than Port Melbourne have got. As the hand pass misses Cameron. Has it knocked away from him illegally by Xavier Ma? Just slipped into the back, said the umpire. And Tom Cameron had a huge night as a late inclusion against Werribee a fortnight ago. Kicks out to the wing. That's a terrific grab taken by Jack Johnston against two Blues. Lays on now. Gets around Glass McCasker. Sends it towards the pocket. Big fly front spot. Manton couldn't take the mark. He can go in again, turning back in board. Kerno shows his class. Through the middle there goes Cooch, uh, goes the, the Blues, and I've completely stuffed that one up. I'll get back onto it now. Cameron has it back again. That's who I was looking for. Alex Sincotta. And away goes Port Melbourne. That is Kuchinotta. That's where I got tongue-tied. It's a nice mouthful for both of them there. And now it's Signorello. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes up towards half uh, forward by hand. Hand pass over the top. Wagner goes towards full forward. Lovely mark back with the flight of the ball from Murkov. It was nice for the big Ruckman to go back and help out the Carlton defence. So Murkov wants to keep it on the Normgoss side of the ground. The kick's not a great one. So it's going to come back in. Templeton, who's just outside 50, can run to 50. It's a chaos sort of footy. It's going to work out okay for Carlton and Dow to get it to Fogarty at centre-half back. He wants to come to the broadcast side. Glass McCasker was up in the contest with Johnston. Hooper, McCasker kept going. Tried to get it back going to Johnston, but Fogarty's got him wrapped up. They're asking the question. The umpire's having a real good he's think about it. it. And he's going to be rewarded. Is Lockie Fogarty. So where will he go with this kick? He wants to go to the Norm Goss. Stand side of the ground. Big contest in the air. The free kick's going to be found going the way of Sam Durden and Carlton. So the mid-season recruit for the Blues. He's got every player in front of him. And then the switch to Lou at centre-half back. He wants to complete the switch by coming right across the ground to Kerno. Just uses the Jew to his advantage as it skids into his chest. Has a bounce down the wing. Sends Carlton inside 50. Big pack of players. Ball hits the ground. Cameron, Carl, he's wrapped up by Holmes. Going nowhere. The umpire will call for the Sharon at the top of the goal square. A big chance here for Carlton. Here is Glass McCasker beaten for it by Hunter. Tried to get through Dow. Hacked off the ground. That'll be kicking in danger against Hunter. And he knew it. He yeah. just walks away. And Paddy Dow will shoot for goal from 20 metres out directly in front. And should have no trouble bringing the margin back to a kick. Now the form of Paddy Dow in the Smithies VFL this year has been nothing short of sensational. He's averaging 29 touches a game. I think the last time they played, which was a couple of weeks ago, he had 34, and you were there. Yes, he was terrific, Paddy Dow, sitting fourth, I think, in the player of the year. He squeezes that home. The coach's award, he is sitting fourth, and he's kicked a nice goal there, an important goal. He's 12th of the year, 
And the Blues are back within six. So he's moved up to eight disposals, had three clearances, and kicked a goal. That's only his second kick for the night. Six of those eight disposals handballs. What about Ed Kerno? He's up to ten. Well, we saw a long drought from a player coming back at this level last week. Harry Cunningham played his first VFL game or NEFL game uh, since 2017 and absolutely killed Essendon with 38 disposals and 15 marks. And Kerno's tracking the same way, just showing that they're above the level. So he may be putting his name in front of Michael Voss in the coming weeks. He won't be a VFL level for too long if he goes out here and has 35. So we go back into the centre. At the moment, it's Hodgkin who's wrapped up by Goats. The two Ruckman will do it again in the middle. Lentini's kick was partially smothered. Tracking the football backwards is Tom North. His handball is going to work out okay. They end up going forward now with Fogarty. To centre half forward, he goes with a kick. Here is Kerno in the contest. It's Johnston doing the roving, chiseling the ball out to the broadcast side. It's Oscar Manton. Cutting back inboard for Lintini. Just wants to go forward as quickly as he can. Oh, it's a strong mark in the contest. Michael Lewis. He just managed to outmark Matt Signorello. Get body on him. Take front spot to take the defensive mark. So Lewis comes to the broadcast. So that's a big fly from the back. It was Cripps and Ethan Phillips. Just kept his eye on the yellow pill. And he'll send them back forward. And he does that on the right boot, goes towards Manton, charging out front and centre, Zeust. He saw Carl do it twice, and he says, I can match you. Cody Zeust, terrific small forward craft run once again, and the boy from Wodonga doesn't miss very often, and he doesn't miss there. 13 goals, three for the season now, and Port get the reply. Doing the exact same role that Ned Carl's doing for the Carlton Footy Club at their end. Cody Zeus for Port Melbourne. He's done it a few times this season. He's dangerous around goal. You only need to give him a couple of centimetres of room. Just perfect timing. Hit, hits the ball on the full at pace. And you're just never going to stop them getting a shot away when that happens. And uh, He's lucky that there was no one on the goal line. and Had a little bit of skid too. And you mentioned he's up to now 13 goals for the season. So back in the centre, Hooper had support from O'Sullivan inside 50 again. Zeus is lurking around the place, Lou's in a little bit of trouble. His handle bobbed up, Lentini, oh, it just fumbled at the crucial moment. He's going to be rewarded because he was shoved in the back, Marcus Lentini. And so... You put yourself on top of the football, you give yourself a chance to get these free kicks and Lentini is really starting to to warm into his new club over the last three or four weeks. And the speed that we're seeing Port Melbourne enter their forward 50 is putting the Carlton defence under immense pressure. Lentini's averaging 25 touches for the season from his 12 games. He has a chance to kick his first goal of the evening here and extend the margin from 12 points to 18. Not a problem in the world for Marcus Lentini in Port Melbourne right now. 7-1, 43 to 4, 1, 25, and a couple of goals in 60 seconds, Brendan. Yeah, very important, isn't it? And we said Lentini averaging, you said uh, 25 about disposals. 25 and a half touches a game. For Port Melbourne, he averaged, I think, around about 35 last year for, <laughs> for, Port, uh, for Coburg. So he's playing a slightly different role. Well, I wonder if but he's got a bit more support in this Port Melbourne midfield than Phil, like does. he has to be the man. He probably does have a bit more support, and he's probably... Uh, yeah, he's not, I don't know, I suppose that at times he was potentially guilty of kick chasing a bit. Yeah, okay. And he doesn't have to do that as much anymore because because he does have O'Sullivan and Templeton and those guys around him. Coburg a good midfield, don't get me wrong. Which it's disappointing to see they've only won three games. As we see the ball is flicked over the top by O'Sullivan and they'll break again through the middle of the ground. There goes Manton. That was Oscar looking for Archie. Zeust is at the base of this pack here. Can he get a handle on it? He can't. He does in the end. Archie Manton hand pass. Lentini dumped over the line. And it's going to be a throw in. Free kick, is it? No. No. Is it? I think it might be. Just it might be a free kick to Lentini. Shove in the back. Yes. Well, it was potentially there, but I didn't. I seem to think the umpire was signalling to toss it in. 
But Marcus Lentini with a chance for two goals in the space of a minute or so. And he's being put in the car park to take his kick, however. Goes around with the J-curve, hooks it back and misses to the near side. So one goal one for Marcus Lentini. As the Borough stretch their lead to 19 points. Game high. The one thing Marcus does when he gets the footy is he usually kicks it more often than not. He's had nine disposals, all kicks so far tonight. Durden in the back pocket. The kick's going to work out okay. Now it comes to the broadcast side. Joel Trudgeon has the ball right in front of where we're calling all the action. He goes with a handball to sin it. This one ends up going out of bounds. And the umpire's going to toss this one in. Right on the wing. Port Melbourne have answered the early momentum of the Carlton Footy Club in this term with a couple of goals themselves to take back a 19-point lead. We've gone 10, 11 minutes in the second term. The ball palmed down to the front. Here is the captain, O'Sullivan. Got it to Templeton. Round the body to Lentini. There's the midfielders and Hooper. They're working in unison right now. Off to Zeus, back to Hooper. And inside 50 go the Borough. Thumping kick of the football. Aquay goes back with a flight with courage. Gets the big fist in and rush through for a minor score. That was every single one of the four Port Melbourne midfielders being part of that passage of play. They are looking like the Port Melbourne of old, aren't they? Ominous. Adam Scrobelak doing an absolutely marvellous job here. Filling the, filling the biggest shoes probably in recent history in the VFL in Gary Ayres. It's got the real Matty Knights post-Kevin Sheedy era about it. That aura. Yeah, so so far so good for Adam Scrobelak. Fine coach in his own right as Hodgkin won the tap. Of course, made his VFL coaching debut in 2018 bringing Frankston back into the, yes. into the comp. Only won the one game that year but uh, laid the platform for what Danny Ryan and his and his team are doing now, and in that they're competitive almost every game, and a chance to win almost every game as Carlton breaks away. This was a long kick down the outer side, came from Stocker. He's turned it over, however. Port with the switch, Wiedemann, all the way back to Cameron, over the top to O'Sullivan, holds it up on centre half back. Goes through the middle of the ground to Hooper. A hand pass to Oscar Manton. Sold the dummy beautifully. Goes towards full forward, Roberts. How good was that whole passage of play from Ethan Phillips taking the mark and their willingness and want to cut back through the centre square and go directly the shortest route home to goal and Roberts is on the end of that. Just outstanding football. When they take it on and go... They're as, uh, they're as pretty to watch as any team in the comp at the moment, Port Melbourne. Fletcher Roberts has kicked 14 goals, six for the season. Shouldn't be an issue from there, and it isn't. And Porter off to the races. They're out by 26. And the one thing that has happened in their previous goals to this one, and that included, is Harvey Hooper. He's been that focal point in the centre of the ground. He's almost like the anchor for them. He's got himself running, hasn't he? And, and he's got... Players running either side of him. So if he's not kicking the footy inside 50, he's taking the mark or picking up the loose ball. And he's got the runners coming from either side. Tommy Cameron, uh, on that occasion, chiselling the ball forward was uh, Oscar Manton, who's, of course, at one end, while his brother Archie's at the other. They're doing some magnificent things. And this is almost the template that the Melbourne Footy Club started at about, what was it, the 19-minute mark of last year's grand final. And every team in every division of every competition is following. Here's Hooper again. Inside 50 go the Borough. Big pack of players. The fly from Manton at the back. The ball hits the deck. Which way will it bounce? It goes towards the boundary line. They're asking the question as to whether it was kicking in danger on Matt Signorello. And the umpire saying, no, throw this one back in. But they are hot to trot right now. Eight goals, three to four, one. The last six minutes has been owned by Port Melbourne. A free kick has been found. It's going the way of Alex Murkov, the Carlton Ruckman. Who of course, was playing local footy at the start of 2021. And he's ended up on the Carlton list in the mid-season draft last year. Ball hits the deck. 
Carlton can surge forward. Can they get an answer? Carl's got a couple to beat. It's just bouncing around the place. Oh. So he was very overzealous there, was Carl. Nick Burke has earned himself the free kick in the defensive back pocket. Went by hand. Now he's going to get it back and just dump the footy down line. And Murkov gets rid of Hunter. Umpire said that was okay. Front and centre uh, there for the borough was Kuchinotta. And the ball trickled over the line right in front of the Port Melbourne race under the middle of this famous old grandstand. The Norm Goss stand. Ball back into play. Murkov in the front spot. Just getting a hand pass away was Dozzy. He didn't get it away, said the umpire. And the free kick will go to Hooper. Chips over the top. He's got one running for him in Hanrahan. Onto the right boot to nice smother. Brought the ball back, did Fogarty. They got it back again, Port Melbourne. Long ball from Hanrahan towards full forward. Big pack flies, ground level ball. Walker had an airie. Went back and got another go at it. Can he pick it up? No, it was taken away by... Uh, taken away for the Blues by Sincotta. And they get it over the line. Outside 50. And it'll be a boundary throw in. About 60, in fact, around from the Port Melbourne goal. We talked in the first quarter about the fact that they went down to Casey last week, but sometimes you learn some things about yourself and your footy club in losses against the best teams in the comp, and they've set about implementing those strategies throughout the week. Unfortunately, on this occasion, they're giving away a free kick. So Murkov, Durden, runs past for support, thumps the footy down the line, Cripps fisting for the safety of the boundary line right at the Port Melbourne interchange gates. And so the umpire will call for the Sharon to be thrown back in. Really is a long way back from Carl for Carlton from here. 26 points down. Uh, you can turn that over quickly, but they really don't look like it at the moment. No, they're under siege right now. All the momentum is with the Borough. Murkov just handballed up to Dow, who met straight away. Sin Cotter was there to offer him support. Dumped the footy forward. And centre-half forward is the Carlton Footy Club. Sanders, left football into the pocket. Carl's around the place. He's doing the Romeo, just ran past him. Fogarty got the handball going one way, then the other. The shot into goal from Tom North. Again, Port Melbourne asks the question, was it touched? And again, the umpire dismisses that, and Tom North kicks his first. And it must be said, Brendan, it's well and truly against the tide of the way the last six, seven minutes of this game has gone. Well, as soon as, I, uh, as soon as I say they're in trouble, Carlton kick a goal. I've so, just got a knack. Port got a, Melbourne supporters will be saying, shut up. They've got a direct line to you, the Carlton bench. They've said, he's, <laughs> Rhodes, he's just said this. Yep, let's go and kick a goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great finish from Tom North. It's game. Nice Similar goal to the, on the first left, quarter, yep. they were at the siege and they managed to kick something out of nothing. And again, it wasn't all that clean. It was more just that chaos footy to get it in there. And, just and stay, in, just the stay in the game. Stay, yeah. stay in the game. Stay in touch. And that's what they're doing at the moment, the Blues. As it's one down by Hunter. Templeton got crunched as he got his kick away. North camps under at the goal kicker. He'll take off back onto that left boot. Sends it across to the Norm Goss wing. That's a mark. That's a very good mark one on two for Carl, who's being very dangerous. Sends the kick towards half forward. Inside 50 it goes, at the back with a chance, nice hand pass through, Handley sells the dummy beautifully, runs into the open goal, it's two in 30 seconds. Yeah, that's a lot better too. That ball movement is a lot better, getting it in quickly, helping your forwards, Handley's in the right spot, doing the roving. We're seeing some really good crumbing goals. Uh, we've seen Carl do that a couple of times, Zeus for Port Melbourne, uh, and now Handley. Adds his name to the goal-kicking list with a kick like that. And the march is back to 14 points. Literally 60 seconds ago, we are asking the question as to whether Carlton have got any momentum at all. Well, and they've got plenty <laughs> right now. <laughs> Two goals in the space of a minute. And, well, that's why we've got a brilliant competition. The margin is back to just 14 points. As we near time on the second term. Goats won the ruck hit out down, but Lentini again got lower and earned himself the free kick. 
So Port Melbourne can go inside 50. It's a chiseling ball. Somehow, in all the confusion, they lost the captain, Tom O'Sullivan, who will go back and have the shot at goal. Just kicked the two for the season so far. Now, as I was preparing for this game earlier today, Brendan, uh, I'm told Fletcher Roberts is the man who takes credit for teaching Tom O'Sullivan how to kick. Now, Fletcher Roberts kicked a goal just five or six minutes ago. Let's see if the captain can produce the same result. He shoots in the goal. The pack forms right on the line. It just falls short. Off hands it goes. A minor score. Well, he takes the credit for teaching him how to kick. He's got two goals, five for the year. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Fletcher might not want to talk that, that loud. <laughs> Although O'Sullivan, the two goals he's come up with have both been huge goals at big times of games. The one against Werribee a couple of weeks ago could not have been any bigger. As Sincotta goes short. And finds Radovanovic. He'll chip it back across the goal square and give it to Lou. Lou goes by hand, running hard for him. There is Sincotta to the wing. Sanders, that was a lovely kick. Sanders here. goes again. Carl could go all the way here. Decided to try and centre it, and it slid off the outside of the boot and worked. No, it didn't work. It's out on the full. Glass McCasker took the mark. But on the wrong side of the line, he really had to put on the afterburners to get there because the kick from Carl wasn't the best. Kick back inboard. O'Sullivan gives the hand pass over to Wagner. He'll chip it back inboard to Lentini, having some sort of first half. Up to 13 now, Lentini. He'll go short as well and give it back to Wagner. Wants to go laterally. Now he will, and, well, it went about three metres. He gets it back. That's the way to furnish your stats. From Wiedemann up to the wing. Zeus with a nice mark. Plays on inboard here. Templeton gives... Oh, I thought he'd given the hand pass. He didn't. He swung back around. Got onto the right boot. Touched off the boot by Kale. Nicely done. Here is Holmes. Turned over, however. North. The Blues can break now. Straight through the middle of the ground. Uh, Carl over the top. No mark taken by Wagner. Hand pass over the head from Carl. Little hand pass back in board. Handley caught by O'Sullivan. Brought down. Great tackle. Not rewarded. They were almost out. They just needed one handball to connect the Carlton Footy Club. And they were off to the races and charging into an open goal. The Port Melbourne defence stood strong, stood tall. It's in a half back. O'Sullivan, he's in this contest. He's barreling back in after it on hands and knees. And... Uh, Hanley got him high. So the captain, he's going to be rewarded. The workhorse for the borough. Goes across the ground to Wiedemann. Wiedemann's off and running. Left football, 50. Templeton takes the mark. He crosses 50. He shoots into goal. Open goal, beckons. Aquay goes back with a flight. Can just take the mark right on the goal line and stop this one from going through. So Dom Aquay. He's got plenty of time for think music. Wants to come to the broadcast side. Carroll got two to beat in the air. Anastasio's doing the roving work. Left foot, centre to the top of the goal square. The pack forms. A Quay comes in from the side. Zeus is doing the roving work oh, and dribbling it home to goal. Not a problem for Cody Zeus. He kicks his second. And how often are we going to see him do that in the Smithies VFL? He's already done it twice tonight. There's a light down there. That's a Smithy snag straight off the top of the pack again from Cody Zeus. They've found one here. Werribee gets a lot of credit for, for bringing in and, uh, and giving opportunities to players out of the Ovens and Murray in the Goulburn Valley Leagues. Uh, they're well known for it. Port Melbourne's found two right here. Cody Zeus at one end and Jackson Wiedemann at the other no who are really making their name in the VFL this year. Uh, Zeus is 25, so it's taken him a while to get down to get down here. And Jackson Wiedemann, North Aubrey's best and fairest winner last year. Right. They didn't win a game. He's 22 years of age. Uh, but, yeah, came, came down here. I think he played forward last year for North Aubrey in a team that didn't win a game. He's come down here, gone to full back, and he's been terrific as well. So well done, Port Melbourne, for finding those two guys. And the Blues, after getting a 6-6-6 warning... Here's the turnover. Kucha, not a hooper. Through they go again. O'Sullivan, Wagner. Long ball towards full forward. 
Front and centre, who's there this time? It was Sinnott for Carlton. Trying to get through, Manton hooks it towards goal! Archie Manton! Smithy snag, two in a minute for Port Melbourne. Oh, take your pick, which one do you want? <laughs> oh, sensational stuff. That was terrific. Now, I was just about to say that I don't like the fact that Cody Zeus kicked that goal and he's sitting on the interchange bench. But if Archie Manton's going to do that, then it's perhaps okay. they get the changes right every now and then, the coaches. Oh, when, when you kick a great goal and just go and sit down because of the rotations. Oh, sports science gone mad. So what about the fact that Port Melbourne have now answered the two Carlton goals within 30 seconds, much like they did at the start of the term. And as we near half time, 27 points is the margin. And I think that's uh, game high again now, isn't it? Just about. They got to 26 before Carlton had that little rally. So we go back into the centre again. Hodgkin, Murkov, Holmes over his shoulder. Big fly from Cooch not up. The ball hits the ground. They come to the broadcast side with a kick. Oh, it's not a great one. Off the ground. They're just more in hope than anything else. There went Tommy North. They're camped under this. A couple of Borough blokes have got the Blues wrapped up. They're going to be rewarded. Lentini wants to take the advantage. He's charging inside 50. Can he get to Signorello? Fisted away from him. And uh, Radovanovic can run away, run his full measure, get it to Durden, who chisels the ball up the line. It's a wonderful kick of the footy. Glass McCaskers, though, a long way from home. Fogarty, just in the front of our eyes, is telling him to go backwards. Glass McCasker wants to have none of that. Wants to send it forward. They're just outside 50. A wild handball. Johnston left it behind. Carlton can go back in after this. A free kick's been found. Going the way of Carl, who's kicked a couple of goals himself. Ned Carl. His little ball's going to work out okay. So they're outside 50. Dozzy dumps it in long. Goats. Murkov decides to do the roving on this occasion. Just handballed it into the pocket. Wild comes back the other way. Going one way, then the other was Goats. Kerno looking for Fogarty, but Carroll's out there. Comes to Fogarty now. Outside 50. They can dump this footy inside 50, although it's going backwards. And they've got the numbers, though, Carlton in the centre square. Lou almost threw it back to Durden. Gave it out to Sinnott. Sends it out wide. Puts it in the hands there of Radovanovic. Heading towards half time here at ETU Stadium. We've been going 29 minutes as Radovanovic goes inside 50. Big pack around the footy here. And the umpire says, my ball. 27 points the margin in favour of Port Melbourne. Well, they need a goal from this stoppage before halftime, Carlton. Just to give them something to go in with because Port has answered the challenge so far. They've answered a couple of challenges, in fact, in this first half. Dow. Manages to rip his way through. Gives the hand pass off. Handley with a flying shot. Sprays it across the face. Sneaks it in for a behind. Margin back to 26. Been uh, very accurate in front of the sticks, both of these sides in the opening half. 10-4 yeah, plays 6-2. You like to see it. There's been a lot of games this year lost by poor kicking for goal, including one earlier today. So it's Cameron thumping the footy. To the broadcast wing. Came back to Lou. Off to Fogarty. Hanley. His little ball's going to work for Kerno. Just outside 50. Comes back to Lou. He's met in the contest by Wagner. Who's dancing on a dollar. Going to Tom O'Sullivan. Just showing a bit of candy. It's in a half back. Off to Gasper. On the wing. Signorello comes out to meet it. Full chested. Takes the mark. Kick and a half out from goal. He's got to wait for some numbers. Gasper's charging down. Templeton's calling for it in short. He'll just set it up now for Gasper, who can run and jump. Springs in his feet. Free kick's been found going the way of the Carlton defence. This time it's going the way of Hamish Sinner for a push in the back. First game back from a broken jaw, Matt Signorello. And they've kicked 10 goals without their leading goal kicker contributing on the scoreboard as yet as he tries to as he finds his way back into... Action. Carlton head down their Norm Goss wing. This ball is with Carl. A lively first half with a couple of goals. That wasn't his best. 
And it goes out of bounds in front of Goats. It'll be a boundary throw in. 31 and a half minutes gone, so can't be long to go. Been four goals for Carlton, five for Port Melbourne in this quarter. As the umpire finds a free kick here to the Borough. And it's going to the skipper, Tom O'Sullivan, playing game number 148 tonight. Closing in on a very rare milestone at VFL level these days. As the siren sounds for half time and Port Melbourne fans will get behind their team as they head into the rooms for the main break because they have turned it on in the first hour of this game and they will go to half time with a 26 point advantage. And the Borough 10 4 64 leading the Blues 6 2 38. Reasonably healthy crowd here, all rugged up like we are too. Brendan Rhodes with you and ready to bring you the second half is Joey Pignataro. It's a 26-point ball game at half time. Port Melbourne answered every challenge that Carlton threw at them in the first half. Will it be much of the same in the second? Or will Carlton get their skates on in the Premiership quarter? The umpire holds the ball off to get the second half underway. They've thrown the bounce down away and tossing it up in the centre. And it's Templeton to centre half forward. Here's Gasper. The speech, they got it off to Anastasio. Onto his Ruckman in Hunter. Dumps the kick inside 50. Just bounced away from Signorello. And Carlton are going to have their first disposal of the second half, but only as far as Tom Cameron, who thumps the footy back to the top of the goal square. The big pack of players is there, but Sam Durden, in the end, went up unopposed, took the mark. And he sends it out to the Norm Goss wing. Clears his target in Carroll. Tracking it back is Hunter. He missed with the hip and shoulder. He decided just to... Uh, just a jog past there. What do you think the message would have been from the Carlton Footy Club at halftime from the coaches? I think they just need to need to stop that run through the middle of the ground, don't they? They've, they've got to tighten up in the middle and uh, and stop the switching that, uh, that Port Melbourne has been able to use across halfback to get that run going. So it's probably defence across the half-forward line, I think, is the key factor to get back into the game. Ball toss back in. Lentini off to Wagner. He was hot to trot in the second quarter. Marcus Lentini. Again, they all come out to meet it at centre half forward. Went through the hands of Radovanovic. And the umpire called for the footy. Ed Kerno's in the uh, Carlton midfield tonight. Paddy Dow is also lurking around the place. Hunter jumped over the top of Murkov. Off to Lentini. Onto Holmes. Now into goal goes Holmes. Gun barrel straight. Brilliant start to the second half for Port Melbourne. And Nash Holmes sends the Sharon home. 11 4 70 to 6 2 38. That is not what you want if you're an old dark navy blue. Well, the flags are flying over in the cheer squad here at ETU Stadium. And, yeah, well, this is what we've been waiting for. And I wanted to ask you, uh, only 30 seconds ago, would you be, if you're Carlton, playing a lockdown-type role on Marcus Lentini, who's up to six clearances, 15 disposals, or do Carlton not have that type of player in their midfield makeup? Well, they do, but he's on restricted minutes and he hasn't played a game all season. <laughs> so probably not what they, what they need from him at the moment as he breaks out of the middle here, Ed Kerno, up and under kick towards half forward. Wagner sweeps through, couldn't pick up the ball cleanly. Dow, he got wrapped up. Crowd wants holding the ball. That would have been harsh on the Blues if that had been paid. And so apart from that, I can't really think of someone who could really lock down on him. Might be a good lesson for a young fella like Dozzy, maybe, who's running on the wing here with Campbell Walker. Free kick taken by Templeton, who finds Walker. Boy from Collegians, Campbell. He goes short. Templeton ran hard to get it back, and he runs a merry dance away from Trudgeon, kicks inside 50, but Lou gets back and takes a strong mark for the Blues. Go, Alex Murkov. So there's uh, some He's of the fans player. who are... He's a good player. Very keen on the big man, Alex Murkov, who's in this contest. Fisted away from him. <laughs> the ball comes back to Wiedemann. 
Going one way, then the other. Went back to Ethan Phillips, whose first thought was to go backwards. Off to Lentini. Went looking for Gasper. At centre-half forward is this Sharon. It's just bouncing around the place at the moment. Radovanovic went across the ground to Tommy North, who took the mark, going back with a flight. He had Signorello for company. Managed to grasp it into his chest and get to Ed Kerno. And the overlap run, they cut through the centre square. It's Carroll. Beautiful left foot ball. Cutting across the front of that contest is Ethan Phillips. He does it so often, every single week. Off to Campbell. Walker, he goes. Not a great kick in the end from Campbell. And the mark's been taken by Sam Durden. And Durden trying to work his way into the game. This is a poor kick. It's sold Trudgeon up the river. Anastasio. Lou got it back. Oh, beautifully done, Therese. Straight through the middle he goes towards full forward. Oh, even better. <laughs> even better, Ethan Phillips. Great passage of play. He goes across to, jo uh, to Cameron. Now Wiedemann onto the left boot. Long ball down to the wing. How much space. It's in the hands of Hanrahan who fires it inside 50. Just a hand in there, brought the ball to ground. Lou had another go. Handball out wide, Radovanovic. He chips around the corner. Diving for it is Sincotta. And he marks in front of the Blues in a change bench. So he's at half back, got to stop and prop. Just wait for something to come towards him. In the end, he opts to just go down the line. The Norm Goss wing, that's a strong mark in the contest. It's going to be paid. It's got to come back because it was a mark to Glass McCasker. Sporting the glove on the left hand tonight. He's the captain of the Blues. Now he's got to wait for some options further afield. There's not much movement ahead. So he'll just kick it more in hope than anything else. Big contest. And the only man that went up are the Borough and the Ruckman, Paul Hunter, can take the relieving mark. He thought about coming to the broadcast side. He's going to now keep the Sharon Camp on the Norm Goss wing. Oh, arriving quickly there was Glass McCasker, but he wasn't quick enough. And the shadows on the outer side, it was Burke, who put it long up to the wing. Worked under the ball was Hodgkin. Gathering here uh, was Archie Manton. He goes towards half forward. Bouncing ball. And Signorello can't keep it in. The Carlton players want insufficient intent. I don't think they were ever going to get that. It's worth asking the question these well, days. you don't get it if you don't ask. <laughs> that's true. Uh, throw in. Inside 50. One down by Hunter. Sincotta couldn't pick it up. Dow did. Handball to Lou. Stolen. Trying to get through there with Signorello. He tried to do too much. And it's holding the ball. So, Carlton have got the footy. Through David Hanley. Just backtracks. Concedes a bit of ground. Stocker has it on the last line of defence. Goes across the ground. The ball's with Sinnott. The ball's going to be fisted away. Here is Manton, who's just outside 50. And the Blues through Carroll win the ball back, although O'Sullivan was strong in the tackle. They did manage to win up the footy, though. Did Carlton, but at the ground level, at centre half back, they do have the numbers and they're exploding away through the heart of the centre square. Holmes, the old one too, they can keep going. Cutting a sway through them is Angus Hanrahan. All the space is ahead of them. And the ball is now with Fletcher Roberts, who kicked a great goal in the second term, has the chance to kick his second of the evening. And he's certainly within range, I think, Fletcher Roberts. And it's just been the theme of the night. When they get the ball from half back, they want to go and they want to go quickly and they want to come corridor. And right now, it's paying big dividends for the blue and the red. So Roberts from right on 50, hoping it'll start to swing back, but it won't. The ball won't do that for him, just with a head bobble and a minor score. They move to 11-6. Stocker charges away from full back. Sends it long down to the wing. Carl's at the back. Gives the hand pass off to Ma. Though it could be off here. He decided to stop and draw the player. Fogarty gives the hand pass back over to Ma. Great defensive pressure from the para. That is excellent football from Port Melbourne. 
Corey Wagner it is. He had three to beat and he corralled them beautifully. Wagner goes short, not the best of kicks, but able to just make it good back there. Is Hanrahan, concedes to the goal square, almost. Cameron, and he goes to O'Sullivan. And O'Sullivan wants to keep it on that broadcast side of the ground. In two minds as to where to go next. Just went for Hanrahan in the pocket. It's about the only part of the ground that isn't bathed underneath these magnificent lights. That small section in the pocket, thumping kick of the football was Hanrahan. As the ball hits the deck, it's Stocker doing the roving. Comes to Ma. They're right on 50. Handball from Carroll was intercepted by Holmes. It may come back the way of the Carlton Footy Club from right on 50. They're in to goal. Here's Carl. He's done this twice. He's now done it a third time. That is extraordinary stuff from Ned Carl. Three of the best. All something out of nothing. And it brings the margin back to 25 points. Ten minutes into the third term. They're just hanging on right now. The they Carlton are, Footy Club. Now that's about all they're doing is hanging on. And Ned Carl is doing most of the hanging. And it's been... There hasn't been a lot of fluency in the way they've approached the forward 50 arc, Brendan. They just, just get it in there and give him a chance. And, and he's delivering Ned Carl, and he's getting up the ground too. He's having a really good game of footy, up to 14 disposals. And I would reckon, well, that'll be 15 once their third goal goes on. And I reckon he's probably had almost half of them on the defensive side of the wing. So he's getting up the ground and, and running back hard to give himself those options uh, to break away from the defence uh, that might be put on him by, by the Port Melbourne back line. Out of the middle, here goes O'Sullivan. Ran over the ball. Hooper didn't. Hacked it inside 50. Hooked back out of defence for Carlton. Here is Sanders. Fed the handball back. 1-2 was nice uh, with North. Now up to the wing, right in front of Broadcast. That's not a mark. Good try though from Ethan Phillips. Got it back to Cameron. Quick thinking once he realised it wasn't be paid. Cameron touches it on the ground. Drives it up towards half forward. Charging out was Hunter. Couldn't take the mark. Dodging and weaving. Stocker sends it to the outer side. And that's a good mark in the front spot by Dozzy. It was a great mark and they've got some overlap run going the Blues. Running on top of the ground right now. Here's Lou sending the ball inside 50. Trying to reel this in with a one juke, but couldn't quite. It was Glass McCasker. Tommy Cameron's coming from the other side of the contest. Wiedemann. Ball hits the ground. Jack Johnston's in there. It came up the way of Glass McCasker. They're in the pocket. Managed to work this out okay. And uh, on the end of it is Lockie Fogarty. Well, it was a little bit tight and tense in there. A little bit scrappy. But somehow the ball has ended up with Lockie Fogarty, who himself is up to 14 disposals. It's the chance to make this number 15 and bring the margin back to 21 points. Just one goal, three in his eight previous games this season for Fogarty, so spends most of his time at the other end of the ground. So kick into the Bob Bonnet end of the ground. He shoots into goal. The umpire set themselves and it hit the stick halfway up, so it's a minor score. 11-5 to 7-3. I tell you what, Brennan, on a chilly night, though, it's pristine conditions. The accuracy in front of the goal has been magnificent. Yeah, they're not missing too many, are they? What are we at? 18 goals, 8. One of those, a poster. Burris worked it out to Phillips. He chips it back inboard to Wagner, who's starting to rack them up across half-back. And that is Archie Manton, who's... Really enjoying playing regular football. Holmes flicks it over to Anastasio, stops on a dime. Gasper back to Anastasio, goes to ground but got a hand pass away. Radovanovic decided to get in low. He might have been losing his footing too. And he got wrapped up there by Kuchinotta. And it's a ball up about 40 metres out from the Port Melbourne goal. Not a wet night, but uh, plenty of dew on the ground, which is causing a few players to slip over. Might be a hint of fog coming in too, potentially, or is that just the lights? 
It's cool enough, that's your for guess, sure. Your guess is going to be as good as mine from here. They are magnificent lights that are ringing this ground right now. Campbell goes the way of the Carlton Footy Club. Dozzy had a hand in all of that. Just dumped up to the wing and goes off hands in front of the Norm Goss stand. Good contingency of Port Melbourne fans in tonight. In the last five weeks, they've gone loss, win, loss, win, loss. But as uh, Brendan mentioned a bit earlier on in the first half, a couple of those games have been toss of the coins. Toss back in. Can Carl make a fist of this? Here's Carl. Got the handball. Going forward to Trudgeon, who was met solely in the contest. He's going to be rewarded with a free kick. And Joel Trudgeon. With the free kick, he's been a little bit quieter today than he has been in previous weeks, playing a defensive role. He got it to Dow, who kicks inside 50. Glass McCasker coming out, crunching the pack and taking the mark. And he put a couple of them down too <laughs> in his efforts. Harvey Hooper taking some time to get to his feet. Phillips is saying, I got a fist on that. But that's very rarely going to be called play on, is it? when it's in a marking contest like that. It did look like he got a fist to it, but uh, a couple of bites of the cherry for the captain, not a problem. So Jesse Glass McCasker, no score yet tonight. Five goals, eight only for the season, but even he's finding the middle. Glass McCasker with his first goal, and the Blues, much needed, back within 20. So they kick two in a row now. This is what they did in the second term. And uh, will they learn from what... Happened in the second quarter where the Borough then went on their merry way and answered. If they can string another couple together, 20 points can be whittled down very quickly. We're 15 minutes into the third term. Liam Stock has moved his way up to 19 disposals, leading all comers. Ned Carl's up to 17. Fogarty, 16 from a Carlton perspective. Lentini's 18 for Port Melbourne. Ethan Phillips is up to 16. The uh, fullback for the Borough. Nine marks, Ethan Phillips. Just does that every single week. Hodgkins moved into the ruck. Here's Fogarty off to Dow. His handball was a no-look one. Which opened the door for Anastasio to get into his captain in the Tom O'Sullivan. To an open goal. He shoots towards it. Sam Durden going back to take the chest mark on the last line of defence. Goes with a short one to Radovanovic. He wants to keep this in the corridor. It's a great kick to Paddy Dow. Kick's not a great one, but it's going to work out okay. Although, making a contest of things out there with a borough. But it was Michael Lewis standing tall in the contest. And he got the short one going to Dozzy. Who's running up and down the wings. Both sides of the ground. Murkov made a contest of things. He came back the way of Trudgeon. A high up and under. Right on the paint of 50. It's back towards... Sanders, but Kerno swings around. His kicks and they're going to go as far as Phillips. Hanrahan and the umpire will call for the Sheriff. 6.8 degrees and falling here at uh, oh. ETU Stadium. You're selling it. Still warmer than it was last <laughs> night at the Geelong. <laughs> Four by the end of that game. And raining. So we're doing well as the kick came out towards half back. And the crowd is here and they are making plenty of noise though. They're not worried about the cold. This is Archie Manton. A long way up the ground. Sends the kick long towards the half forward line. Big fist from Dirt and at the back. Here's a chance for Zeus. You'd back him from here. You'd lose your money. Zeus misses to the near side. Gamble responsibly, of course. <laughs> That wasn't one <laughs> behind only as uh, Handley can't take the mark. Wiedemann fed the hand pass back. Hanrahan, Kuchinotta, O'Sullivan can have another go at it. Towards full 40 goes. Aquay got there this time and saw it over the line. So the ball's going to be tossed back in in the forward pocket. 21 points to the margin. That shot from Zeus was probably one of his easier ones in comparison to the two goals that he has kicked. Might have been too easy. <laughs> Had too much time to think about it. Ended up missing. But they're in attack again, the Borough. A couple of repeat entries. Roberts has moved into the ruck for this contest. 
Goats had a wild shot at it, trying to clear it for the Carlton defence. On this occasion, though, the umpires found the free kick, holding the footy. Said Lentini was camped over it. So the Blues can clear. They'll go to the Norm Goss side of the ground. The kick came from Stocker. Big contest on the wing. Free kicks going against Dozzy and going the way of the Borough. Going to send this footy back inside 50. Goats is the tallest man there. Went over his head. Aquay. Goats is doing the roving work. A wild shot towards goal. It's dribbling all the way through. Now they're going to ask the question as to whether it was touched, but I don't think it was. And it's Fletcher Roberts, the man who dribbled at home. Well, we've seen some goals out of nowhere tonight, Brendan. That might be the best of the lot. Yeah, that's on the Smithy Snags list for sure. Fletcher Roberts. Big men aren't supposed to do that, are they? No, no. They should not get below their knees. <laughs> Not not below the knees and then hooking it out of a pack, that's for sure. Well, that is breaking the hearts of the Carlton fans. 27 points is the margin. After they've just had all this hard work in the last 10 minutes to kick the last two goals to get themselves back into it. Again, we've said this a few times tonight. The repeat entries of keeping it locked in there into the ground. The brings, damn well burst for the Carlton defence. It brings the opportunities. And who was it who put it in there, I think, three times in a row? Yeah. The skipper. Lifting big time as Templeton tries to come out of here. He's wrapped up by Fogarty. And it's going to be a ball up. So they gained about five metres there, Carlton. Ball hits the ground untouched. Fogarty to half forward, playing in front. Crucially there is Sanders. He's going to go to the teeth of goal. Big men to fly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Who else? Ethan Phillips. He's having a huge year. Gave it to O'Sullivan. Chipped it out into the back pocket. That is Kuchinotta. Over the top he goes. Deep in the shadows. It'll be brought out of defence for Port Melbourne. Long ball to the outer, to the Norm Goss side. Gasper working his way through. Got pushed over, I think. He did. Jake Gasper will get the free kick just forward of the wing. Ten marks to Ethan Phillips. Leads all comers on the ground. Jake Gasper has the ball. Wants to gain an extra ten metres by his legs running towards goal. Thumping it inside. 50. Couple of bites of the cherry. That's going to be paid. That's a terrific mark. From Manton, this is Archie Manton, and we talked about him in the first quarter, Brendan, taking those sort of marks and gaining some extra confidence by going back and kicking the goal. Yeah, he's got to finish this now. Carlton's had a really good run through this through this quarter. They were working their way back into the game again. Manton kicks this. It's back out beyond five goals again. So Archie Manton kicked two goals in the first half. Going to the Fred Cook end of ETU Stadium. 27 points to the margin. How many goals did that great, late great man kick from this position, I wonder? Archie Manton can stand tall. Good things coming three. He has his third of the night. Port Melbourne have got a couple in a row to bust the game back open to 33 points. They've had every answer to every Carlton question so far tonight. They certainly have. They've been excellent, the Borough. I reckon four times Carlton have come back, but every time Carlton have come back with two goals, Port Melbourne have kicked three. Yep. And that's why they're, they're just edging an extra goal ahead every time. And the Blues will keep, keep fighting. Top four spot on the line, but they're going to need a big last quarter now. It's probably not a time for the Carlton VFL side to be thinking about this, but there's two Manton boys. Of course, their father was a great Carlton player playing in the opposition team here. At the start of the year, when these players are up for grabs, are they not getting asked to come down to training? Well, Patoons, they've been around for a while now, the, the Manton brothers, and they're doing a great job tonight. Here is Walker. He kicks inside 50. Long ball, front spot was Hunter, and he's been outmarked by Tyrese Liu. 
NAB League talent, Therese Liu, 19-year-old. Oh. Dangerous kick has been chopped off, however. At the base of the pack there uh, was Zeust. Chincotta, Anastasio. Those are the two on top of the ball. And it's going to be a ball up. Yeah, Archie Manton, 21 years old now. Oscar's 22, so certainly late developers, the two of them. You'd think they'd be still looking as Templeton's hand pass went backwards and out of play. They're in total control at the moment, the Port Melbourne Footy Club. This one's about to be tossed back in. Just outside the paint of 50, Murkov and Hunter will do the ruck work. Paddled into the path of Oscar Manton, who put his head over the football. Wagner was coming the other way. Hooper was cleanest when it did hit the deck. O'Sullivan went inside 50. Gasper was taken high in the contest. He's still on the ground. The ball comes to the broadcast side. Going one way, then the other. Backtrack, retreating and conceding ground was Dozzy. The kick worked out okay in the end. It's now with Oliver Sanders. Wants to go to a Quay. Carlton are camped in their defensive end of the ground for the moment. So Quay wants to keep it on the broadcast side. Here's Phillips again. Glass McCasker was the one fisting this footy away and Tom O'Sullivan was helping it go over the line. Good to hear the umpire's whistle working beautifully. Oh, straight, Waking up Brendan Straight Rivers. through. Straight through. <laughs> yeah, waking us up all right, that's for sure. Not that we need waking up because it's a terrific game of footy. Ball back into play. On the city wing, both Ruckman holding. Murkov probably got the touch. Dow, good work by O'Sullivan. Just got a hand in there, knocked it away from him. Tapped under uh, by Hunter. Hooper's in there as well. Umpire says, my ball. As we tick towards three-quarter time. We're at the 20... Six minute mark as well. They fought each other for it and lost it. Did O'Sullivan and Holmes, and it doesn't really matter because because Fogarty's kicked it halfway back to the city. That one's that one's landed on Williamstown Road, and it's going to be a free kick to Angus Hanrahan. Second game in three weeks. Back in the team for Port Melbourne. He sets it up to the wing. The fly was Lou. Couldn't take the mark. Picked up by Gasper. In fact, he fumbled at the crucial stage. That gave North a chance. He fumbled. It's starting to get a bit slippery and dewy. And I'm certain I'm certain it is fog coming in now. Certainly only a very light fog. But we're going to have a ball up and the big men right in front of us. Murkov thumps it forward. Nice hand pass out from Handley. Kick forward, Ma. Picked up beautifully by Holmes. Puts it out to Hooper. Thought about O'Sullivan. Gave it to him at the second go. It was too late, and he's gone. Ball spills free. Hand pass came out the back. Underground goes Carroll. Ma. Hand pass over the top. Now coming through, Kerno On the ground late in the quarter for the first time tonight. Not a good kick from Ed. Anastasio's a long way from home, and he charges out of defence. They're streaming forward now. It came out to Signorello. Hunter breaks for him. The big ruckman, Signorello, provides the lead. Beautiful ball. Hunter chisels the ball into the pocket. Is he going to work out okay for Gaspar? The speedster, the magic man. Can he pull a rabbit out of the hat? Oh, he's oh. hit the stick halfway up. He's a speedster, Jake Gaspar, making something from nothing from the pocket. It just gets the one point for the result. 13-7 to 8-3. 34 points the margin. Well, Zeus gets a hand in, knocks the kick down. Clearing ball, however, from Trudgeon. Was okay. And there will be a long ball from Lewis up to the wing. Taken by Holmes, who's having a good night. Lentini. It'll be quieter this quarter. Cameron's kick was beautifully smothered. Turnover time, Fogarty. He goes by hand through traffic. 
Trying to pick it up there was Trudgeon, couldn't do so. Back there was Burke. He sent the kick long up towards the wing. Trying to work his way through traffic there. And the siren goes for three-quarter time. And another excellent quarter from Port Melbourne. They kicked three goals, three for the term to Carlton's 2-1. And at the final change, the Borough, 34 points to the good. And they're going right now. And the Borough, well, they can draw level with 14th place Frankston if they go on and win this game. And they'll be only, I do say only, they'll be two and a half games still outside the eight. But uh, certainly heading in the right direction, the Borough, if they can finish this off. The umpire holds the ball aloft. And the man with the mic is Joey Pignataro. Throwing it back in the air. Murkov down to Hunter. Hooper he came back to Murkov. And straight away, it's Holmes wrapping up Paddy Dow. And the umpire will ask the question of giving back the football. So a restart in the centre square. Murkov went past Dow, came back to Carroll, was met by Gasper. They've got support from Stocker to Sincotta. They go inside 50. It's a beautiful ball. It's the dream start for Carlton in the final term and for Ned Carl, who's become a bit of a highlights package of sorts tonight for Carlton. One of the rare shining lights that they've had in the opening three quarters. Has the chance in the opening 60 seconds to give them the first goal of the final quarter. He's looking for his 20th goal of the season, which, uh, which would take him close to the edge of the top 10 in the Frosty Miller medal too. So he'll have to kick this from right on 50 to the Fred Cook end of ETU Stadium. Sinks the slipper into it. And just misses. Just started to fade a little bit late. So that's his first blemish of the night. He has kicked three. Carlton, eight goals, four, 13-7. They trail by 33 points. Tom Cameron with the kick-in duties. Runs his full measure. Sends it to the Norm Goss wing. Over the back, Lou couldn't take the mark. North, wrapped up by Anastasio. And the umpire is circling, but then deciding to give him the benefit of the doubt. So, trying to work his way through there was Dow. He managed to tumble a kick. Big tackle put in there by Sinnott. One of the three late inclusions. Repeating for those joining us late, Josh Honey, Will Hayes and Will Setterfield all travelled to Perth where Carlton takes on the Eagles in the AFL tomorrow. As holding the ball is found here. Port Melbourne free kick going to Harvey Hooper. It was Hamish Sinnott, Tom North and Luke Goats who came into the team. Long ball from Hooper. Goes to the half forward flank. Big pack flies. Ball to the ground. Who's front and centre? Port supporters want it in the back there on Gasper. They're not getting that. And it's going to be a ball up. So they are forward of centre. The Borough. A handy 33 point lead right now. This one's not going anywhere. So it will be bounced in the, the same spot again. Been a big day of VFL football, round 16 of the season. Plenty of action. It's uh, being finished off here tonight at ETU Stadium. Here's Jack Carroll, the speedster, thumping the footy inside 50. Carl went back. The shot at goal from Cripps is a perfect one. Nails it on the left. The tallest man in the forward line delivers the tallest moment of the final term for Carlton. And they cut the margin back to 27 points. Yeah, they needed the first one, didn't they? He's had a quiet night, Josh Cripps. Haven't seen a lot of him. But uh, an important goal and an important time. Does that give them something to build on? Just his fourth disposal for the night for Josh Cripps. And obviously, his most important one. Yeah, if he can stand up and kick two or three in the last quarter, you forget that he hardly got near it in the first three, especially if he gets his team over the line. 85 plays 58. Early doors in the final term. Umpire goes with the throw up. 
Murkov slaps it yes, back Murkov. down. Oh, great oh, pick up. Murkov. Sends oh, inside oh, 50. Oh, <laughs> Good timing there once again, the Murkov cheer squad. <laughs> as the kick goes towards full forward. And the umpire will have a ball up. A couple of old Ivanhoe boys just strutting around. <laughs> Fair effort to be to be plucked straight from I, old Ivanhoe to the uh, to the AFL list in the mid-season draft last year. The kick will come away from Burke to the outer side. Chance now for the Blues to turn it over. Radovanovic, one two. That was nice. In Cotter goes inside fifty. Oh, oh yes. Lovely stretch and mark from Xavier Ma. Well, it's almost against the tide right now, what they're doing. But again, we've seen this nearly every quarter. They've managed to kick two quick goals, and then Port Melbourne have managed to regain momentum. So he's got to do that for a start. He's got to kick this second goal in a row for a start. And then they've got to work on making it three. Xavier Ma, and Shepherd and United. Murray Bush Ranger kicks the goal. He does get his first. Carlton do get the first two of the final quarter, and it's back to 21 points again. That's his eighth goal of the season. And they cut the margin, as you said, 21 points. They're just starting to keep the ball locked at their end of the ground. Now, we said that in the third quarter. We said in the second term, and then Port Melbourne have done what they've done through Hooper, Lentini, through O'Sullivan in the middle. So this is the chance that Port Melbourne have to regain the momentum. I don't think they've managed to kick more than more than two in a row, have they, the Blues? I don't believe so, two, no. Two there at the start of the second, two middle of the second, two in the third, and now two. Yeah, yeah, so they haven't kicked three in a row yet. They've got to do it now if they want to win this game. So Murkov gets over the top. Stocker put the footy on the ground for Carroll. Was pushed off it. Open the door for Hooper. But the pocket was picked. And there, inside 50 again, the Blues from Dozzy. The pack forms. Big contest as the ball hits the deck. Hanrahan. It's the handball going back to Tommy Cameron, who chisels the ball for Zeus. Just a bit dewy as he tried to slap it into his hands and ends up going over the line in front of the interchange gates. We've spoken a bit about Alex Murkov. The... Uh I saw him make his VFL debut in round one last year against Southport, against Braden Crossley and Fraser Thurlow, and he looked that far out of his depth. It wasn't funny, but the, the development that he's made since then is absolutely out of sight, and he's been close to an AFL game, hasn't he? It's very close, especially with the injuries that the Ruckman at Carlton have sustained, although De Koning has managed to make a really good fist of things now that he's sort of been the number one man with Pitnet. Out injured at the moment as this one's going to be thrown back in in the forward pocket. Now, if they get a stoppage goal from this, it'll give the Navy Blues something to cheer about after seven minutes of the final term. Cripps is going to do the ruck work. Flashing through was Carl! Oh. It's a minor score. Ned Carl, he's made every post a winner so far in this game. A couple of blemishes now, but the margin is 20 points. And you feel like, Brendan, they're pressing the Blues. This is their big chance. This is their probably their last real run at it, you think. How long can they take it? Hanrahan brings the kick out to the uh, telecast side. and stumped away by Stocker. Sees it over the line. This port crowd, and it is definitely... Some fog coming in now, especially down the Bob Bonnet end of the ground. Might even be coming off the dew, off the grass too. It's starting to be difficult. As we see Carroll try to go through. Hand pass came through. Ma kicked the last goal. He's caught. How did he get rid of the ball? It was okay. Kick, and then kick. a high tackle on Trudgeon. So Joel Trudgeon will get the free. 55 metres out from goal. Thought about the handball. Umpire calls him to play on. Sets it inside 50. Ball brought to ground by Cripps. Hacked out of there. Phillips to halfback. Signorello fumbles the mark. Slapped on by Wagner. Trying to go straight through here is Sincotta. His hand pass was too hot for, for Goats. Went and got it again, Sincotta. Fed it back to Stocker. On the left boot, inside 50 he goes. Bouncing ball gets away from Glass McCasker and over the line. Now you can throw a blanket over just about every player because they're all 
forward of centre and lurking around this stoppage. Carlton are pressing. They trail by 20 points. Giving away some height in the ruck. Hunter won it down. It bounced past Hooper. Dow goes in after it again. It bobbed out. The way of the Blues. The shot at goal is a wild one from Dozzy. It's going across the face. Ethan Phillips dropped the mark. He's taken them all night. The whistle's been found on play and Phillips been shoved in the back. So he'll take the relieving free kick and they can breathe for the moment, Port Melbourne. Well, the fans are starting to get a bit on edge, that's for sure. Carlton supporters having a bit to say to Ethan Phillips behind the goals. As he drives it long to the outside, a Quay flies over the back, couldn't take the mark. Anastasio front and centre, got it back and then booted forward uh, for the Borough by Cameron Zeus. Now there's a whistle on play here, free kick going to Port Melbourne. And that is Kuchinotta. Or is it, is it Manton? It's a long way away from us. It's Kuchinotta who goes long towards the forward pocket. Through the, through the fog and the rising dew. Sincotta fed the hand pass back. And it's over the line. Well, it was hard to see in the shadows before. Good luck now, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> Certainly. In the last five minutes... It's picked up and you can see it on your screens through the AFL website and the AFL live app. The ball's on the paint of 50. Port Melbourne are in attack. O'Sullivan fumbled the football over the door for Stocker. His handball only went as far as Hooper. He's wrapped up in the contest. Trudgeon has him wrapped up. The umpire will call for the Sharon again. We've gone ten and a half minutes in the final term. Goats came the way of Carroll. Was thrown into the turf. It came back to Wagner. Hoped for the best by getting it to Walker. That kick was smothered. You can hear the slap of the football on hand. Now it's at ground level. Again, it's partially smothered, but they're backtracking and retreating. The Port Melbourne Footy Club. O'Sullivan got it up to Walker. Dumps the kick inside 50. Aquay from the back. The ball hits the deck. Lentini's lurking around the place. He's going back in after it. Now he's hitting the deck as he's paddling it towards his teammate. Paddy Dow's got him wrapped up. The umpire will call for the Sharon. It's all a bit chaotic at the moment, Brendan. Well, next goal, how big is it? 20 points the margin, 14 or 26 could decide the game. Oh, fumbled by Holmes. He'll go back and get it again. Sin it. Can't keep it in. There'll be a ball in underneath. That fantastic big new tower over there in the canteen pocket. Bob Bonnet into the ground. Another legendary goal kicker at this famous old club. Hunter with the tap and then the hack out of midair, but Dozzy will get oh. there and he <laughs> probably nearly gets a 50. Umpire says no as Hooper fell over him. Dozzy sends it out wide, Fogarty. Goes around the outer side. Here is Phillips at the back. Hand pass is partially knocked down. He has to go and get the footy back. Well done, David Handley. Yeah, super. And he manages to create a stoppage at half forward. Super from Handley because they were off to the races if that handball from Phillips had hit. And now Carlton have the opportunity. As Rhodesy said, the next goal, oh so important. If it goes the Blues way, we're back to 14 points. Murkov and Hunter, it bounced past them all. The kick and a goal from Fogarty hits the top of the goal square. The pack forms as it hits the ground. Dozzy got the handball going. This is going to work out okay for the Blues. It's Cripps taking the mark. Oh, did he take a step? Did he take a step? The umpire's given him the benefit of the doubt. Half a step. I no. Oh, I'm not sure yet. Did he, he he went to go? Did he actually put his foot down? Oh, oh. He definitely considered strongly. He could going. he could not have complained <laughs> if he'd been called to play on. Put it that way. Now Josh Cripps kicked a goal earlier this term already. Has the chance to kick the second for himself and three in a row for the Blues. We're right behind the kick. Oh, it's not a good one. It's right across the face. It just makes the journey off hands through for a minor score. You get the feeling that Port might need another one. As Wagner comes away from fullback, nice kick finds Zeust. 
just to make it safe. They haven't scored yet in this final quarter. Zeust brings it down the wing looking for Lentini and Lou. There's a fair bit of hair between those two. Lou goes back and a little kick was nice from Stocker. Lewis is called to hold. Bit of cramp maybe for Manton. Uh, Oscar as Fogarty goes across the middle of the ground. Will it sit for North? It does. Gets onto that left boot. Drives it inside 50. Bouncing ball. It bounced away from Phillips and got over the line for a throw in. He's looking dangerous, Ned Carl, around the stoppages oh. and the loose footy. Oh. We've really got a ball game here. It feels a lot closer than 19 points, doesn't it? It certainly does. There's no question about that. The 14 and a half minute mark of the final term. This is where Carl can get dangerous. Went past the two Ruckman. Dow was wrapped up by three of them. Holmes and Hanrahan. They'll pick themselves up. The Carlton wall is set just outside 50. Every player is forward of centre. Who's going to be Nick Davis on this occasion? Hunter tapped it down. It's not going too far. Hanley and Wagner, they'll pick themselves up. So they'll reset again. Just at the teeth of goal for Carlton. Glass McCasker tapped it away. Port Melbourne's defence can stand strong. Ethan Phillips can come to the broadcast side. Anastasio's got it all to do in the air. He was in the contest. He's being held, asking the question. He's going to be rewarded is Anthony, Anthony Anastasio. Lentini screaming for it. He went for Templeton. Oh. I was met solidly was Eli Templeton. Stocker made him earn every bit of that. And the Port Melbourne boys want a bit of remonstration. Don't do anything silly and turn it over, though. Nash Holmes and Corey Wagner having a bit to say. Templeton runs away and kicks towards half-forward Signorello. There's a metre in front. He steps around his man in Sinnott. Then he steps around a second and a third. And gets the free kick for a high tackle against Sinnott. It's just a, it might have been a professional free kick in the end. In fact, it was Lewis who's given it away. He's very calm here, Signorello, and setting up for the goal. Or he's got the arm in the air. Set play here. Let's just see what it is. Is it top of the goal square? It certainly is. Top of the goal square. Big fly. Big fist came from the Blues. Sincotta couldn't pick it up. Trudgeon. Was he caught high? Umpire says no. And it's going over the line for a throw in. And now every player camped forward of centre at the Port Melbourne end of the ground. So they're following the football like bees to a honey pot. Both sides. Carlton desperate for a win to keep him in touch with the top four. Potentially in the four. Port Melbourne to keep their very slim finals chances alive. Head over the football was Holmes. Tried to maybe make more of it than was there. Fogarty had him wrapped up, as did Xavier Ma. And the umpires called for the Sharon again. Tom O'Sullivan calling for some spread and separation around this stoppage. Throw a blanket over around 20 of them. Hunter was left out of it by Murkov. And the big fella's going to get the free kick. Paul Hunter, who kicked a goal earlier on tonight, has the chance to probably sink the Carlton hopes and put this game beyond doubt at the 17 and a half minute mark of the final term. Yeah, you think you think the game is on his boot here. So the number 23 to the Bob Bonnet end for their 14th of the evening. Bang! He's got it! Straight through the heart of the Blues. Paul Hunter kicks his second. Port Melbourne have their 14th, 14-7, 91 to 10-6-66. And you can see the blue and red flags waving from the other side of the ground. They're up and about. That was their first goal of the final term, Brendan. 18 minutes into it. First score, in fact. 13-7 at three-quarter time. And that is, as you, as you just called, a dagger blow to Carlton who have fought so hard to try and get back into the game. Port Melbourne go down, get one opportunity and they take it through the big man, Paul Hunter. 25 hit outs for Paul, four clearances up against Murkov who's had 32 and five clearances and giving away that free kick on that occasion. 
They don't get a lot of the ball around the ground, just 9 and 12 disposals respectively, but they're doing their jobs. As the ball came over the top here, Ken Carlton with the quick reply. This is Carroll, runs inside 50 and kicks it into the uh, Sandridge Events Centre just about. <laughs> Disappointing result. He was going quickly. Yep, he was going too quickly <laughs> in the end. A little bit off balance. A free kick to Port Melbourne in the last line. Jackson Wiedemann will go with the switch. Gets it to Wagner. Or is it Cameron? It's Cameron, in fact. He goes short and finds O'Sullivan. The skipper will chip over the top. Had to get there and put the pressure on Johnston. Back to O'Sullivan. Hand pass over the top to Cameron. He tried to go underground. Anastasio is out of real estate. 25 points the margin. Time on now in the final quarter. Carlton needs a miracle from here. They trail by 25 points. Murkov, Holmes, Hooper came to Templeton, trying to get around Dow. Back to Stocker. His handball was just a wild one. In fact, it's going to get himself a free kick. He may have been taken high in the contest, Liam Stocker. So he'll just thump the footy forward. They've just got to go now, the Blues. Kerno's lurking at the front of this contest. Asking the question for a free kick. The umpire, not officiating, has come across and said, yep, there is one there. It is going the way of the Blues and the way of Xavier Ma, who kicked a goal earlier this term. Have the chance to kick another one here and maybe ever so slightly bring this back to game on. Taking plenty of time over it, which uh, it's time he probably doesn't have. So Xavier Ma sends it goalward. Umpire doesn't move. Just looks straight over the hat and kicked the goal. Back come the Blues. That's Ma's second. 14-7-91 to 11-6-72 at the 21-minute mark of the final quarter. Is there still a little pulse, Brendan? They'll need another one straight out of the middle. They've got to score four times still from here. That, uh, that extra behind that Port has on the board. So, yeah, I think it would be... It's very hard to see, but stranger things have happened in footy, and it happened to Carlton against Frankston a few weeks ago. Yes. And the Blues... Port Melbourne against Box Hill. Yes, and the Blues... In fact, kicked nine goals in the last quarter against Box Hill too earlier in the year. So it has happened, and it has happened recently. Oh. Paddy Dow out of the middle to half forward. Cripps floats in from the side and takes a nice mark. And Sinnott, in fact, has come in from the side here. And I'll get it right the third time because it's Joel Trudgeon. So Joel Trudgeon... Been a big possession winner this year. Not so many tonight, I don't think. 15 tonight. He's kicked from 48 metres out. He's got the carry. Well, maybe there is some life. 13 points the difference. Joel Trudgeon with his first goal. And Carlton have kicked two in a row. So they kicked two in a row to start the final two. Port Melbourne kicked the goal through Hunter. They've quickly responded with two of their very own. So they've been able to four, cut the margin. 4-3 to a goal in this last quarter so far. It's not a remake of Collingwood North Melbourne earlier today where it was just all Collingwood in the final term. Or even the Gold Coast Suns for that matter against the Tigers. Been a, Metricon. Been an interesting day. The Suns against Frankston earlier on too. Here's Lentini. Dow made a contest of things. Walker off to Hooper, who was hot to trot in the second term. Can he do a repeat the dose here? Goes for Manton. A quay. Somehow that ball has stayed in the field of play. Came back to Holmes. Nash off to Hooper. Harvey trying to bend this round the body. is missing. 
And that's their first bit of fluency for a while. The Borough, the margin is 14 points. 23 minutes and 40 have ticked by. Straight up the middle goes the kick. Who's going to take it out of here? Wanting it. There is uh, Holmes hooked back by Walker to half forward. Roberts at the back lays the tackle on Stocker as he tried to sweep around. And it's a ball up 49 metres out from the Port Melbourne goal. 14 points in the ball game. The Blues still need to find three goals to win it. It's definitely three they need now. As Walker got it back to Hooper. Inside 50 he goes. Over the back. A wonderful mark at the back. Taken by the young man in Therese Liu. And Aquay looks to be in some real trouble. Just on his haunches in front of us. Great kick from Liu up to Carroll. Though he was met by Hooper. Made a real contest of things that came to Paddy Dow. Just zigzagging his way out of trouble. But the handball back towards Carroll. Gasper's trying to keep this footy in as it tracks the boundary. And the umpire decides it is over the line. So there's a few players who are just sucking in the big ones right now. We've gone 25 minutes in the final term. 14 points to the margin. The ball's at the Burroughs end of the ground. It's where they want it to be. Hunter to the front. Coming across was Trudgeon. Came back towards Stocker. Balls at ground level, just bobbing around. Hanley tried to get the handball going forward to Carroll. Was met as soon as he picked up the footy. It came back to Dow. And they thumped the footy forward from Goats. Trying to take this mark was Kerno on hands and knees. He's met by Lentini. It bobbed out the back door. Trudgeon, he's got some time to just put it over his shoulder and send them forward. Fogarty waiting for someone to present. Running into space in the pocket, but not quite getting there. Ball hits the deck. Anastasio's lurking around the place, so is Henrahan, a free kick! A free kick's going the way of Carlton! In the pocket! Hands in the back! And it's going to be Oliver Sanders to take the free kick. Biggest kick of his young career right here, Oli Sanders. He kicked the goal a bit earlier on tonight. He has the chance to make it eight points at the 26 minute mark. In comes Sanders. He shoots into goal. He's careful with it. And it's a beautiful strike. They are coming home like a freight train, the Carlton Footy Club. Don't write them off yet, Brendan Rhodes. Well, they have they probably have time. They still need two goals. Eight points the margin. It'll be 27 by the time play restarts again. Game on. And Ollie Sanders, a boy from Tasmania... He would have played a lot of footy in this in these temperatures. <laughs> Knows the conditions well. <laughs> yeah. Linked up with uh, Maribyrnong Park yes, yes, Lions at the moment. Made his debut at this level for North Melbourne last year. Played a couple of games for them. Second game for Carlton. So. Timely moment to stand up. Big, big goal. He's second of the night. Umpire tosses it up in the centre. Murkov with the tap. Lentini over the footy. Can he get it out? He can't. Umpire's going to have to come in and sort us out again. Secondary ball up. Eight points the margin. 27 and a half gone. You get the feeling that there's probably around about three minutes or so to play. There's another ball up. Is called Wagner being held up there. Still time if they're good enough, Carlton. Murkov with the tap. Hand pass from Dow goes over the top. Signorello's gone behind the ball. Oscar Manton with a fumble. Stacks on the mill once more. And it's going to be another ball up. And the Blues have gained about 30 metres without having a possession. With nearing the 28th minute. Throw a blanket over it. 15 or so players. Murkov, Hunter. Murkov won it down. Came back to Carl. Got it going to Hanley, who's got a handball backwards to go forward. Stocker got boot to ball. Thumped it forward. Big contest at the top of the square. Which way is it going to go? Ethan Phillips is lurking around the place. The umpire crosses his arms and says, I'll have it. And it's now a rugby scrum at the top of the square. 
Palm down towards Burke. O'Sullivan was wrapped up in the tackle, going nowhere from Hanley. And Ma, you can hear the frenetic nature of both sides. Eight points the ball game. It came out to Sanders. Can he be a hero again? Sanders, no way! What a goal from the young man! On the left foot, we've got a two-point ball game at North Port Oval. Unbelievable kick from Oli Sanders. Well, we said the last one was the biggest kick of his career. That one was bigger. Wow. Two-point ball game. 29 minutes gone. 14-8. To 14-6. They've kicked 6-3 to 1-1, Carlton, in the last quarter. Now the Port Melbourne bench are holding up the red sign, which can suggest there can only be 60 or so seconds left. It would be nice to know that some clubs actually have how long there is to go. But the red board, you're right, is up there. There can only be 60-odd seconds left. They've got to get the clearance, Carlton, if they're to win. And obviously Port Melbourne have got to lock it down, Brendan. Can they pinch at the Blues? Hooper. Gets a hand pass out, O'Sullivan, fed it back to Wagner, brings it out to the broadcast side, tracking it here towards the line. You heard the bodies crash as it crossed the boundary line. It was Kuchinotta who saw it over, right in front of our broadcast position. Surely not long to go, 30 and a half minutes have ticked by. Here comes, uh, it was Manton. Inside 50 goes Archie. Bouncing ball. Who's there for Carlton? Little kick from Durden back around the corner. Hooper. It was off hands. Hooks it back towards the top of the goal square. Lou. Back with the ball. Takes a great mark. He goes across the ground. They've just got to go now. The Blues, if there'd be any chance, it came to North. He goes across the ground. It's a sweeping kick. Carlton are making it end to end. Can they go the length of the ground, the Blues? They've just got to go. Marsh just stopping and propping. You've just got to get it in, son. He thumps the footy down long. Glass McCasker came out to meet it. Full chest and it fell through his hands. Over the door for the Borough defence. Ethan Phillips sees it over the line. The umpire will ask for the footy again. They nearly went all the way home. Two points to margin. 31 and a half minutes gone. The players are stuffed. Port Melbourne are hanging on. Carton are pressing. Thrown back in. Murkov and Hunter came down to Murkov. Big pack of players on the paint of 50, a high up and under towards the boundary line. They're asking the question. The ball stays in play. Zeust went back by hand. O'Sullivan. Again, the umpire says, throw this one in. Wow. 31-40 on the clock. There can only be seconds remaining. That red board still hanging high above the Port Melbourne bench. Murkov and Hunter, big hit out. Hunter won it. Front and centre, Cameron. Can't get it clear. Umpire comes in, gave them plenty of time. Calls for the ball up. 14-8 plays, 14-6. What a great game we've had tonight. Walker, big kick. Goes up towards half forward. Durden and Signorello. Durden couldn't take the mark. Anastasio hooks it around the corner. Tracking it is Roberts. He's happy to track it to the line. And it goes out of play. It's the right end for Port Melbourne now. Wow. 33 minutes into the final term. Every player comes forward to the ball. Carlton is still trying to set up the structures around this footy. Murkov will double fist it down to Fogarty. Brilliant smother by Walker. It came back to Carlton. They dump it forward. That might be the ball game. Johnson takes the mark. On the wing, he asks the bench how long to go. He'll just hold the footy for as long as he can. You can hear the fans. They're restless. They want the siren. He thumps it down long. Off hands. It goes towards the boundary line. They're happy to see it over. We've got 33 and a half minutes in the final quarter. It's the longest quarter of the game by some distance. I tell you what, the bloke holding the board's going to have the sorest shoulder of all time. He's wow. been up for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder what it means. Murkov, Hunter with the tap, taken away from him. O'Sullivan, hacked forward by Hooper. 
Inside 50 it goes. Bouncing away. Oh. Anastasio! Touched on the line. Siren! The Borough have hung on in an absolute classic at ETU Stadium. Port Melbourne by three points.